All right, we're back. Fish clips. We had to break this one up into two parts. Saginaw Bay Boat Ranch, part one, coming up. Before we get started, you should go check out the Facebook page. New original content every day. Here's a reminder. I already did the work for you. There's a link in the description to a Google map list that's got all these ramps saved. It's yours. Just go get it. All right, we're going to skip the rundown. We're going to start up at Port Austin and make our way down to Saginaw River. Here we go. All right, Port Austin, located 8774 Lake Street in Port Austin. This ramp's only open mid-May to mid-September. This is a big ramp for big water. If you can put it on a trailer, this ramp can make it flow. And it's a DNR ramp, so bring your rec pass. Transient and seasonal slips are available. It's a nice touch for a multi-day trip. Navionics got you in 15 foot of water as soon as you leave the harbor. One mile out, you're in 30 foot. Three and a half miles out, you're in 50. Six and a half miles out, you're in 100. Lakers through eight inch holes in hard water. Also found some small action. Dragon scrap metal for kings. Lots of kings. And these guys putting a stringer together of wallies in the pier. There you have it, Port Austin. It's got me thinking. Get the dust off my riggers. Here we go, Caseville Harbor, 20 miles down the road. Two ramps and limited parking. Looks like a one mile trip to get out past the break wall. You're in 10 foot of water when you get past the breakers. Little over three miles, you're in 30 foot of water. I found this guy oh, pulling I'm Laker lips from the pier. Today. This guy putting bourbon on the deck. And this one with a respectable bait stealer. I won't lie, pulling up big Lakers on micro rods seems like a riot. This guy found a Wally worth an Instagram post. For what I know of it, I think this place might be the bow fishing capital of the Midwest. There you have it, Caseville Harbor. More info in the description. Next up, Beetle Bay Marina. Looks like a private campground. It's got room for about 30 rigs, couple of ramps. Looks like you're drifting for a bit to head out that cut till it spits you out to some deeper water at Wildfowl Bay. Looks like you're shallow water fishing unless you want to make a 10 mile run, then you're only in 20 foot of water. This does seem like a good option, though, if the wind picks up and you can't get out of Port Austin or Caseville. There's the fee schedule, and there's more info in the description below. If you can figure out how to get your camper and boat up here, you might be setting yourself up for a pretty good time. I couldn't find a lot of proof of fishing success up here, but I did see this guy get into some smallies and large mouths, and you can't convince me that's not him from 20 years ago. Beetle Bay Marina might be worth some consideration. Right around the bend, Fillion Road Public Access is going to dump you out in the Wildfowl Bay as well. I don't know if this access is big enough to put your walleye boat in, but if you're putzing around an aluminum boat, this might be the ticket. Looks like they got some space. If you're headed up here in the winter, it looks like a good spot to launch and get your sled hauler out on the ice. There it is. Short trip to the bay. Let's go. Next up, Bayport Public Boating Access. I don't know who's fishing here, but they're not bragging about it. Place looks big enough to get a 20-footer out there. Looks like you got a mile run to hit them deeper water. Plenty of inshore fishing opportunities, but you're going to take a 12-mile run to get 20 foot on the graph. A couple miles southwest, we got Sumac Island boating access. There's the entrance. It's not marked. I wouldn't call that cut maintained. That might be a 12-footer in the ramp right there. It looks too big. You're going to have a 3-mile run to hit 5 foot of water. 10 miles to hit 20. If you back up that satellite photo, though, it does look fishy. A couple miles southwest on Ridge Road, you'll find yourself in Seabowing. Can't miss it. Seabowing Harbor Marina. That's where you'll find the ramp. And the Seabowing River Cut seems big enough to get most boats on the bay. Looks like a modern facility. Ramp's got room for four. LMBs and hammer handles for days. They got the channel marked three miles out till you find yourself in seven foot of water. Seven more miles to hit 20. If you fished here, leave a comment below. The next six sites are boat ramps in the loosest possible way to use the term. The first one up is Burger Road Access. Looks more like marsh access than lake access, but maybe that's exactly what it is. A couple miles down the road, Clark Road Access. Similar to Burger with a bigger ditch. If anyone uses that access, I'd like to know what for. I'm assuming waterfall. A couple miles down the road, you got another drop off point on Ringle Road. Same story, just a little bit closer to the bay. Another mile, another access site. This one, Belgian Drain. Then Loomis Road. You can find this one off Austin Road. Then you'll finally make your way to Quanacassi River Access Point. It's got a couple of ramps, looks nice. Catfish, bowfin, LMBs, that's what they're advertising few miles before you get outside the channel. Another eight or nine before you hit 20 foot. Working our way back to the north is the Hampton Township Boat Ramp. It's a municipal ramp on the other side of this campground. Looks big enough to get most of our trailer boat boats on the water. Again, you're gonna have a 10 mile run to hit 20. We're gonna call it quits right here after this one, Jones Road Boat Launch. It's the last launch before we cross over the Saginaw River. Not real big, something for a small boat, maybe a nice launch. If you're familiar with the spot, leave a comment below. Let us know what you use it for. There you have it, 17 ramps in five minutes, not bad. If you find the content useful, why don't you click the buttons down there that indicate that you find the content useful. 
See you next time.